Hello, my name is Ben, also known as Scorpio Tech, and welcome to my 2021 small room setup tour. Last year's setup video recently surpassed 1.8 million views, which is honestly mind blowing to me. So thank you to everyone that watched, liked, commented, and subscribed. Since then, I've made quite a lot of significant upgrades, as some of you would have noticed already, so it was about time I put together my new setup tour. 99% of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you do enjoy the content, please consider subscribing, it would be greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's jump into the setup tour. So 2020 was a strange year to say the least, but for a lot of us gamers and tech lovers, the extra time locked inside wasn't exactly an issue. Not only this, but 2020 was a pretty exciting year for technology, such as the release of the Nvidia 30 series cards, the Xbox Series X and S, as well as the PlayStation 5 and much more. Thankfully, I have been fortunate enough to pick up a lot of the new tech this year, which I'll showcase in this video. To kick things off, let's take a look at the least exciting side of the room. I've got a new bedside table from IKEA called Godicious. It's a spacious, clean and relatively cheap unit costing just £35 and I think it fits my room very nicely. Moving on we have an IKEA Cacti, the Atomtech 3-in-1 stand for phones, smartwatches and AirPods. On there I've got my AirPod Pros, an old iPhone 6S Plus that I use for notifications and my Apple Watch Series 3 which is still going strong. Moving further to the left we have an Amazon Alexa and the beautiful Orki RGB touch lamp which I would highly recommend. As with everything in this video I will link as much as possible down in the description. As some of you may have noticed, the bed has also changed. This is the Bergamo bed from Benson's for Beds in the UK, which arrived just a couple of days ago. It looks infinitely better than the wooden bed that I had before. I'm also going to throw in a link down there for the duvet cover as well, because why not? And would it even be a Scorpio Tech setup tour if I didn't show off a soft as heck Sherpa throw if you want to feel extra cosy in the winter months? For those of you that know me, you won't be surprised that I've run a 12 meter Nova Stella RGB strip around the bedside table, both sides of the bed giving an underglow, around the TV and the shelving as you'll see shortly. But before then, let's move on to a more exciting area of the room and that is the console gaming setup. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, but because of their much increased size over the predecessors, some DIY was in order. Unchanged from last year is the battery powered spotlights. I have colour coordinated for Xbox games, movies and PlayStation games. I do love them but they require three AAA batteries each and they eat through them incredibly quickly. The PlayStation 5 disc edition is set up on the right hand side of the Locken 9 cube shelving unit from B&M in the UK and has plenty of space to breathe to avoid overheating. Because of the width of the Series X I had to cut some wood to use in conjunction with some L shaped brackets to make a shelf for it to sit on. Although it looks slightly peculiar, I'm actually very happy with how it all looks together. Taking a look on top of the unit, for the Xbox side I have a Cacti and a Master Chief Funko on top of a Samsung HWK450 soundbar with the subwoofer directly under the bed. In the centre we have the PlayStation Icons lights which I would definitely recommend, and on the right side we have another Cacti and a Spyro Funko Pop to represent the PlayStation side of things. I've tried to keep things as clean as possible whilst also adding some personality to the room, but as I said before I'm pretty happy with how this area of my room is looking now. The TV also remains unchanged for now, this is a Samsung 55 inch 4K which looks absolutely fantastic in my opinion, but as it's a few years old now it's no longer available to purchase. The only real drawback now is that it's not 120Hz capable, so if I want to get the most out of my next gen consoles this is an area I'm going to have to improve in in the future. As stated earlier the RGB strip runs around the entire TV and onwards to the shelves. Some of you will remember last year I struggled with getting a lighting solution for the very top shelf, but a few of you suggested an RGB strip and that seems to have done the trick. On the IKEA Mosslander shelves that I have fixed upside down, I have a collection of Funkos from my favourite games and movies. I'm not actually a massive fan of how they look, but I think it's a nice way to bring back some memories. Moving down past the IKEA artificial plant, we have another new piece of tech. This is the Davoom Pixu Max. It's a 32x32 32 32 pixel art display, which has a bunch of functions such as a clock, games, and a plethora of user-created pixel art and much more. This is definitely one of my favourite new additions. I have a video covering this product, as well as many more shown throughout this video on my channel with more in-depth reviews, so make sure to check those out. Also on top of the PC, we have the Nintendo Switch. I have it plugged into my PC monitors to allow me to quickly play on the bigger screen whenever I feel like it. So here is the new look PC gaming setup. Quite a lot has changed here so let's delve into it. By far the most expensive upgrade in the previous year is quite easily the Asus ROG Strix 3080, which is a huge upgrade from my previous Strix GTX 1070. I personally love how it looks and you'll see the lighting customizations a little later. 
I recently did a video on this GPU, so if you're interested, make sure to check it out. But a long story short, the card is absolutely incredible performance-wise, running games maxed out with ease has made my gaming experience much more enjoyable. Also inside the PC we have an i9-9900K CPU overclocked at 5GHz, 32GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM at 3200MHz, the NZXT Kraken X62 AIO CPU cooler, a Corsair RM750X power supply, as well as a 1TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus for the operating system. I will link the full spec list down in the description. So let's move on and take a look at what we have on the desk. First up we have a bog standard mic arm holding up the Rode NT-USB microphone, which I'm using right now. I love this system very much as it allows me to easily move the microphone out of the way when not in use to make it as non-intrusive as possible. Another big upgrade this year is the autonomous Ergo Chair 2, which was kindly sent out to me by the company. And although sent out, my opinion on this chair remains unbiased and I personally absolutely love it. It's customizable in practically every way you could imagine, and comfortable for me even after very long sessions. The only downside for me personally is due to my limited space, it can get quite tricky to move around in the chair, but this is one of the compromises you have to make with a small room. Yet another upgrade I've made is the switch from a regular headset to studio headphones. These are the insanely comfortable Bayer Dynamic D Team 990 Pros, which are open back 250 ohm headphones. I use them in conjunction with the small but mighty Sound Blaster G3 DAC amp, and I'm by no means an audiophile, but these things sound incredible with music, movies, and games. You guessed it, yet another set of upgrades with the desktop peripherals. Firstly, we have a Gamma K K66, formerly known as the Wamiya K66, which is a 65% keyboard I picked up from Banggood for just £40. I personally chose the Brian switches, and after testing a bunch of boards, they are currently my favourites. Whilst this keyboard definitely doesn't have the best build quality in the world by any means, for those that don't want to spend hundreds on a custom keyboard like myself, this is a great alternative. It has a huge amount of effects for both keycap lighting and for the acrylic base as well. I've paired this keyboard with a custom white coiled cable from Key Cables to make it look a little bit more special on the desk. And as you can see, I've drilled a hole in the desk as well to allow for this cable to neatly disappear from view, keeping the top of the desk looking as clean and tidy as possible. Now we don't have to look far for the next upgrade as it's sat just alongside the keyboard. Whilst a lot of people aren't fans of Razer, I personally really like the feel and quality of their mice. This is the Razer Basilisk Mercury and it is a nicely weighted mouse which I picked up for just £30 when it was on sale, and honestly for that price it was just a no brainer. Also on the desk we have the Purple Storm mouse pad from Aura Mech. I love the simple yet vibrant design as it really breaks up all the white peripherals from the desk. Another cheap addition I've made is the Lamicool adjustable phone stand. It costs just £10 and is ideal for FaceTime, notifications or even your Twitch chat. Psst, go and check out my Twitch channel, link is in the bio. As for the desk we have kept things pretty much the same. The desktop is the IKEA Linmon which is 150cm by 75cm and it's held up either side by IKEA Alex drawers. I can definitely recommend the IKEA Alex drawers to you but the Linmon desktop is not as drawable as you would hope it would be and after a year's use it's looking a little worn so this may be something I'd change over the next year or so. In the drawers I keep some books, RGB remotes, handheld consoles and games as well as some files and clothing in the lower drawers. Now a question I get all of the time is where do I keep my clothes, and whilst some of it is kept in the lower drawers, unfortunately I have to use a closet which is outside my room to store the rest. This is obviously not ideal, but when you have such a limited space, this is a compromise that you might have to make. In the right set of drawers I keep some quick access screwdrivers, cable ties, notepads and my small karambit collection. And underneath that we have what I like to call the controller graveyard, for the previous generation and no longer functioning controllers. Now let's take a look at another new addition I've made on the desk. I've upgraded both monitors since the last setup tour and I'm incredibly happy with my choices. These are the Asus TUF VG27AQ monitors which have a resolution of 2560 x 1440, 165Hz, IPS and are each 27 inches. I was unsure whether I could fit two 27 inch monitors on my desk but I'm pleased to say I did. Well, just about, anyway. After upgrading from 24 inch monitors I have to say I think 27 inch is the perfect size for gaming and general use. Having two monitors is extremely useful for me, especially when editing, streaming and just generally multitasking. I don't think I could ever return to just using a single monitor again. 
As you can see, I have the right side monitor facing directly towards me and centered on my sitting position, with the left monitor at a diagonal to me for ease of viewing. This has, at least for me, been the ideal two monitor setup. Another choice you can make is by having the second monitor in portrait mode to claim back some desktop space if you do have a smaller desk size. I use a program called Wallpaper Engine on Steam to change to a variety of different static and animated wallpapers throughout the year to keep things looking fresh. Now I'm going to quickly go over how I change the feel or theme of the setup in just a few clicks. Because the majority of my case is filled with Corsair fans, RAM and RGB strips, I can control all of their lighting effects with the IQ software. As for the motherboard and GPU lighting, I can use the Asus program called Armory Crate to adjust those to match the theme. There are a whole load of options in terms of customization, so you should really never get bored, although typically I personally stick with white and cyan theme. This is also the case for the NZXD Kraken X62 with their CAM software. So now everything in the PC build is matching, let's take a look at the other lighting elements that I've implemented in my setup. Still one of my favourite purchases of all time is the Nanoleaf light panels, they make a plain wall into something quite special. The app is fantastic and you can customise them in practically any way you can imagine. They are extremely bright, vibrant and sleek and I think they would make any setup more appealing. Another one of my favourite Nanoleaf features is the screen mirroring. Once connected to your PC you can have the Nanoleaf react in real time to what's on your screen, making for a very immersive experience in movies and games. Sticking with the lighting theme, the absolute best bang for your buck light strips right now are from Govi. They have a range of amazing light strips which can be controlled via your phone, Alexa and Google Home for a very reasonable price compared with the premium competitors such as Philips Hue. They are bright and the colours are very accurate and I would really struggle to fault them at all. I have them around the back of both monitors and the desk to cast a nice glow on the back wall. Cable management is something I continue to work hard on but there is always room for improvement. Underneath the desk I have a 1m length of D-line cable trunking available from Amazon or most hardware stores that allows me to run the mass of cables across without anything being seen from the front. I've also attached the power extension to the back of the desk which means I don't have to run my monitor cables all the way across the back wall, keeping things as neat as I can. As I mentioned last year, it is extremely useful to have a box full of cleaning equipment and cable management tools. In here I've got screen cleaning fluid, microfiber cloths, spray dusters, spare batteries, cable ties, screws, tools, tape and much more that will come in handy throughout the year. I'd also highly recommend getting yourself a pack of anti-static brushes to help you properly clean your PC and keyboard. Moving back over to the desk, my monitor stand I purchased is called the LaVolta Dual Monitor Stand, however this no longer seems to be on sale. The good news is that there is a new product called Bontex Dual Monitor Stand which is the exact same build as this one, so I will link that one down below for you instead. For £30 you can easily hold up to 27 inch monitors like mine without having any tilting or alignment issues, at least that's from my experience so far. For the long running watchers of my setup tours can we get some Fs in the chat for the bonsai tree and the venus flytrap that are sadly no longer with us. Luckily I have managed to raise these three beauties without any health complications so far. So that wraps up the 2021 setup tour. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please consider subscribing and feel free to leave any questions in the comments section below. You can also join my discord server or check my instagram.